Hello everyone, welcome back to another ASP race video. In today's race, we are going to be racing the Starship with the SLS to see if we can get to Z-Mun and Z-Back first. And they're off! Oh my gosh, they're going already. Let's get straight into it so we can get a time lapse going right here so you don't have to watch the entire raw footage as the two vehicles do a roll program because roll programs are fun, aren't they? Uh, both figures are also going to start pitching down range now. Now the two launch vehicles are going to be following slightly different launch profiles. The Starship is going to be following a slightly more standard profile with the SLS is going very steep. This is going to be establishing itself into a 400 by 100 kilometer orbit, while Starship is going to be getting into a nice and low around 70 kilometer orbit. Both vehicles now throttling down as they pass through Max-Q, and they are both throttling up. Both vehicles basically just neck and neck as the SRVs are detached from the SLS, and Super Heavy is going to get ready to detach from Starship, and there it is is cut off and staged away. We go ahead and get Super Heavy Booster Cam in the top right hand corner as the engines are fired up to do its boost back burn towards the KSC. And Starship is now going to be continuing on while it's firing six of its engines initially and then going to be dropping down to just the three vacuum engines uh, after the three uh, sea level engines are gradually shut off one by one. SLS is continuing to chug along through around 50 kilometers as the grid fins have been deployed on the Super Heavy and is going to be coming back down towards the KSC. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the gimbal on the vacuum engines on Starship before I get yelled out of the comments as the Super Heavy is going to get ready to start up its landing burn. SLS has taken a little bit of a lead over Starship as it has a little bit more thrust with those with that mammoth engine as the Super Heavy, like I said, is getting ready to restart to start up its engines and do its landing burn right a while. Now there it goes, engines on, coming in for a landing, and touchdown. All right, Super Heavy is back, and SLS is just about at orbital velocity, is getting ready to cut off its mammoth engine, and there it goes, getting ready to stage away the core stage. And Starship is still actually quite a ways away, around 800 meters a second, still shy of orbit as the core stage has been jettisoned from the SLS, and now it is just flying under the second stage, also known as the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, also known as Stage 2 of a Delta IV Heavy, or something very similar to that. So, relay, starting up the engine, not relay, first, first ignition, A, hey, I can do things, and there it is, Starship is just about to get into orbit, and then the two vehicles can get ready to begin their journey out to the moon with SLS in a slight lead. If you are enjoying the video, we'd like to quickly do the plugs, we have a Discord, we have a comment section, we have a like button, we have a subscribe button, we have a notification bell, that's really all the things, uh, we have a membership, we have a join button, all those fun things you can do if you want to, that's it for the plugs, so thanks everyone if you have done. Uh, any of those things that we have now relit the integrated cryogenic propulsion stage i'll just call it the second stage for the uh, uh, sls and it's going to do its translunar injection as the uh rat vaxxed rat vaxxed or the um well, the wolfhounds uh can relight and begin its translunar injection for the starship as you may have noticed the sls only has an orion module on top of it so how on earth are we going to be landing onto zimun well have you heard of artemis have you heard of gateway because that, that'd be how. So I have a little bit of a gateway station that I actually put in orbit just forever ago. Um, it was my Artemis videos. Those are like some of the first videos I did in KSP. It was like almost five months ago now. Pretty crazy how long it's been. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go and adopt the station and the uh, SLS, they were the, rather the Rhine module, or the Rhine command module is going to dock to the SLS, and it is going to, or dock to the gateway, rather, SLS, well, that was weird, um, and it's going to take down the national team lander, because, you know, national team has Blue Origin contributing, and Blue Origin SpaceX, Jeff who, what? And to keep things fair, Starship is also going to have to do a docking, uh, it is going to have to be docking to a lunar Starship, which is in a low lunar orbit. One advantage that Starship has, it is going to be a much easier orbit. The lunar star survived position in an equatorial orbit. However, the gateway station is located in a very polar orbit. It has some really complicated name. I knew at one point, but I've, I've for near rectilinear halo orbit or non rectilinear rectilinear halo orbit. One of the two. Um, but either way, uh, the vehicles are now very close. Uh, to each other in terms of their, their progress. Looks like Starship is in a little bit of an advantage because it is a little bit easier of a docking to do as the Lunar Starship can become into view. Now my Starship does not have a docking port, so our Kerbal is just going to have to kind of do a little bit of an EVA flight over to the Lunar Starship as the SLS is going to finalize its docking procedure as the top fin, top fin, wow, the top cargo bay opens up and then the Kerbal can really awkwardly get out and fly over. This, uh, I did, like I said in the video last time I included this video, uh, this, uh, uh, this Starship Lander, 
it is from a while ago. It does need a little re rejuvenation. I actually recently upgraded my normal starship, like I kind of redid it, and uh, yeah, for my newer videos. And I'm gonna have to do the same lunar starship soon. But uh, the SLS, the Orion, has arrived at Gateway and is going to take the uh, the national team lander. Going to go to Periaps and going to relight or just light its engine. Wow, I keep saying relight when it's just normal light. But while that's happening, Starship has lit up its engines to do its landing bird. Now, if you know how the lunar starship works, it does not use those three. Vacuum engines all the way down to the ground. No, it relights or lights. Wow, relight again. Wow, words are hard. It lights up the six radially mounted engines to do its landing burn just so it doesn't kick up that much dust. That starship has deployed its landing legs now. It's now just a few meters off the ground and it is down. All right, starship's down. National team is starting to slow down, get quite low in the speed range as it almost hits the mountain, but luckily it uh, it does not as it get ready to uh, get ready to finish up its landing. Both these vehicles do not have a great thrust away ratio landing on the Mon, but they both both have no problem. They, they have plenty of fuel. Uh, we have way more than we need in both of these landers, especially Starship. We can do like two Mon landings if I wanted to. So. Coming down with the Blue Origin Lander, or the National Team Lander, as Starship is back in the air. OMG, guys! It's getting close to the end here, getting close to the home stretch. So, Starship is going to pitch over and get ready to re-rendezvous as the National Team Lander has landed. And is going to get ready to re-rendezvous, or just, I guess, rendezvous with Gateway as it has attached its upper stage and is now going to get into orbit. Starship is just about to finish up its departure burn, or its initial burn, whatever you want to call it, is, is going to once again have a little bit easier docking than SLS will, just because, you know, weird polar orbits, super eccentric, or, you know, equatorial orbits. To pick your, well, one of them is not poison, that expression wouldn't have worked. Equatorial is way easier, so here we go with the lunar starship just getting ready to do its docking and here come or dock it's i guess rendezvous doesn't really do a docking so uh here goes the national team just finishing up its burn and now it is going to do its rendezvous as a very quite quite quick relative speed i'm um, coming into gateway with like 350 meters a second but eh, it'll be fine and here it comes slow in its way down and now the Starship is going to get ready to depart the area and head back to Kerbin. So it looks like Starship with a little bit of an advantage, but Starship, if you remember, uh, has to do a big old belly flop, super kind of complicated re-entry thing. It actually takes Starship two passes to get around just to avoid overheating, um, which is definitely going to give the Orion capsule a little bit of an, a little bit of a little bit of a leeway here to uh, to catch up because all it has to do is parachute down, and you can do things where you like pop the parachute super late. Which spoiler alert, we do. So here is the national team upper stage. Uh, Arriving at the gateway with the Orion module right there just as they left it coming in for the docking and good dock and here comes Starship gonna spread a little bit of its fuel and now it is going to get its fins activated and is going to come in for a re-entry a final pass as the Orion module or the SLS or whatever we're calling it is doing its re-entry and here's a pro tip with KSP You know we're coming in at a really good angle when you see that you we see the circle the orbit line when it's not actually a circle or an oval It is just a straight line. That's how you know you're that's how you know you're doing it, right? So that's for all the noobs out there if you're wondering make sure it's a straight line um, <laughs> So just before everything melts we have to detach the uh, the command module or the command pod as the starship is now below 10 kilometers as SLS is barreling through barreling with those descriptive words as it coming through the atmosphere We're gonna drop them both down to one time speed in just one moment right now there it is as the starship is belly flopping now through two kilometers getting ready to relight its engines and there it goes engines are relit starting to pitch up and the command pod is getting ready to deploy its parachute through around one kilometer there goes the chute Starship is dropping down to two engines, and then it's going to be eventually dropping down to one engine for its final landing burn. The landing legs are deployed. Heat shield is jettisoned on the SLS, and here it is. Starship kind of hovering around here for a little bit. It's trying to cancel out its last little bit of horizontal speed as that last engine is ditched and, or not ditched, but turned off. And here it comes, coming in for a landing. Who's going to win? Starship! Hey, GG. Starship's been in three of these. Um, this is their third appearance in a race video, and it is one one of them. So, uh, good job, Starship. Just just pulled it off, and um, would like big thanks to all of the all of the members, which I'm going to throw on screen right now. They are all the members, so thank you to all you guys. And quick disclaimer, like I, I say, whenever I do these race videos, I have to probably start doing them every video or all every do disclaimer. Point is, these are like entertainment. They're not actually supposed to be like a realistic, fair comparison of the actual craft. Uh, it's just like a fun thing I do, and they are fairly fair, you know what I'm trying to say, like, 
Uh, I don't like speed up the footage for one of them like vastly more. I try to keep it as close as possible um, to to the real events, and it go, it's going off of the the time it took me to fly the mission, not the game game clock, because more fun that way. These are really just fun little entertaining videos. So you know, don't take anything too seriously if you are inclined to do that. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write a comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, and bye.